Good. Bad. Well blended? Not blended. Hi, I'm Gwyneth Price Panos, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about wrinkles. Now before I get started, there's much more to old age makeup than just wrinkles, but in this video, I'm just focusing on wrinkles. Contouring, age spots, veins, broken capillaries, all of that comes in a different video. Today, this video, just wrinkles. A wrinkle is made up of a dark shadow line on top and a light highlight line on the bottom. Both colors meet in the middle and are blended up and away from one another. But wait, Gwen, if your light source is coming from above, why wouldn't the highlight be on the top of the wrinkle? Why the bottom? I know it's counterintuitive, and that's why a lot of people make this mistake, but I'll prove it to you. Here's a folded up napkin. Imagine this is a wrinkle on your face. It's extra bright right below the shadow. When you're blending your wrinkle makeup, use this as a reference. The darkest and lightest colors touch in the middle as a sharp line and then diffuse out. These are called hard edges and soft edges. So it's not just that, oh, this is lighter than this. This is blended. This is not. Oh, that's harsh. No, it's not just that it's blended because in that case you might as well just rub it all together. That's not what you do. You rub it away from each other. Hard edges, soft edges. Wrinkles need to be feathered out. There's no harsh end. So let's take the napkin again. In this napkin, it's folded all the way across. But let's say it's folded kind of in the middle. Because nobody has a wrinkle that goes from one hairline to the other. Do you see this one? It kind of blends out. It transitions. There's not a sharp, sharp line. I use strong pressure and then at the end let go, lightly. Swooshing. So it gets thinner on the edge. Here, I didn't do that. Good, not as good. Old age makeup gets what we call muddy very easily. What makes things muddy is when the colors mix together too much. We want to see the darkest dark and the lightest light and then have them blended out. But if they get blended into each other, it just turns into a grayish mess. And that's what we want to avoid. And a great way of avoiding that is by using two different brushes when you're doing wrinkles, one for dark and one for light. Another way old age makeup starts to look muddy is if you have too many wrinkles. So as you can see here, I'm keeping these somewhat far apart. If I did a whole bunch of tiny ones really close together, far away, it'll just be like a big brown smudge. Which leads me into the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is follow your own wrinkles. If your own wrinkles are really weird looking and asymmetrical and funky, sure, you can change them a little bit. Like here, I altered the U a smidge or I added a little bit of a curved edge here so it wasn't a stick straight line. Some people choose to just do one line in the middle instead of two, things like that. But in general, you want to use your own creases that occur when you make funky faces as a roadmap. Another very important thing to mention is this makeup is intended for stage, not film. Halloween is a good one too. But if you're trying to do a film that's supposed to be realistic looking and not comical, this just looks ridiculous. Up close? I mean, you know it's not real. From stage really far away, it might be convincing with a wig and acting all, hmm, get off my lawn, something like that. My husband's laughing at me. But for film, it would just look ridiculous. Now, the techniques used in making wrinkles for film are very similar. I would just use different colors and I'd be a lot more lighter handed with it. Is that a word? Heavy handed? Light handed? Yeah. So I'd be lighter handed. But that doesn't sound right. Well, I'm creating a saying called light handed. I'd be light handed. Oh no, I totally forgot to mention another huge difference between film and stage old age makeup is that with film, I would need to change the actual texture of my skin with liquid latex and prosthetics and not rely on paint and powder alone. I prefer to do wrinkles with angle brushes. So the two I have for this right now is one from Mud and one from MAC. It's up to you which ones you use. These are just the ones I'm using today. And I'm using the Maron palette from their starter kit. I'm starting with the darker color, but some teachers recommend starting with the light. Hold it at a 45 degree angle. If you go straight on like this, it's a little bit trickier. Drag it out at the ends. We don't want to see any hard edges like this. You want them feathered out on the end. 
It's nice to vary the length too. It's just more aesthetically pleasing. So a lot of times people will have the middle line be the longest. I feel like this one looks like it wants to be longer. I wipe off my brush and I take whatever residual product is on my forehead and slide up. I don't want it so blended that this dark line becomes smudged. I want the darkest part of the line here to have a hard edge and everything above it blended out to be soft. So this is the hard edge, this is the soft edge. Blend out on the outside as well so that it diffuses into nothing. Now I'm gonna take the other brush with the white, but I actually prefer to use an off-white instead of a pure white. But if you can do this and make it look good with really dark and really light colors, you can do it with anything. So this time I hold it down. I want this sharp line to be right up next to the other sharp line. I'm not going like this and laying it at a 45 degree angle so that the flat part of the brush can trace along the sharp line I created with the dark. Do you see how I kind of messed up down here? Well, it doesn't matter because I had it at this angle. If I was like this, it could have gotten smudged up or down. I don't want it to get smudged up. I don't want it to mix in with the dark color above. So here I can easily wipe this off without messing anything up. Now I'm gonna wipe off my brush like I did earlier with the dark. I'm gonna go along that line and blend down. I'm not rubbing along the whole thing up and down, just straight down, feathering it out. What you don't want to do is this. No, that. You don't want them mixing into each other. I still want a defined white and a defined dark. Now I'm wiping off the brush again. So I'm stepping back to evaluate. It looks like a whole bunch of stripes, even blended down. So I know I need to blend this and this dark is way too dark. And these lines, no good. So I'm gonna go in with a Q-tip now. I have very light skin, so something dark will look extra dark on me. So I'm gonna remove some of this. The technique I used was correct. It just looks really, really harsh on me. Someone else, this could be the perfect amount of product. I'm gonna tap it, using clean fingers each time. Now the color does get diffused a little bit when I add powder, but I might as well tap it out just a smidge. When you get to the smile lines, you have some wiggle room. You can choose to have a lot of them, you can have a few. If you're working with really high contrast paint like this, really dark, really light, and you're planning on being on a stage far away from the audience, you want to have maybe three or four lines and keep them further apart. If you're using lighter colors, you're in a more intimate space, you can have a few more. If you find it easier to make your initial lines with a skinny brush like this one, that's fine, but I would still go in with a brush that has a flat side like this to do the blending up and down. You can also find a photograph of somebody who has a wrinkle pattern you like and copy it, but I definitely recommend if you're going to copy an image, don't just copy a makeup. Find an actual photo of an old person and copy their wrinkle pattern. And while we're on that topic, that goes for special effects injury makeup as well. Don't just copy injury makeup, copy actual real injuries. You know, I did these kind of straight. You probably want it more curved around. That gives more of a feeling of age and sagging, sinking. These can go out straight though. I'll throw in another one there. Some of them are looking really good. Other ones, mm, it's starting to kind of look like the whole thing is a big blurred smudge. I really need to see this dark line blending out. It can't just all be from here to here, the same shade. 
like right here. It, from here to there, it's all the same shade. Where here you can see how it's darker on that straight line and then it blends up. And it's still really stripey how it blends up, so I would go in and wanna diffuse it, make it a little less perfect. This is starting to mix in with the foundation I'm wearing underneath, which is okay, but I still wanna make sure there's a sharp white line at the top. So I'm gonna have to go back in. I did powder quite a bit, but this still can kinda happen sometimes. Now this is an area where it's really easy, at least on my face, for these to not look similar to each other. Try to create a new line. I kinda like the way this wraps around like that. Now these lines can look a lot darker at its deepest point than other ones because you can have quite a lot of flesh right here. Your forehead, you only have so much flesh. I mean, it's a relatively flat area. But here, your nasal labial folds, they can get very meaty. So I can be a little more heavy handed. Not this heavy handed, I'm gonna blend it, don't worry. Using a sponge, sort of as an eraser and a blender. Here I have several of these little lines. They're not gonna read very well on stage if I have too many of them. So I'm just gonna go with one. Oh, I haven't powdered yet, let's powder. One of my favorite powder puffs from Cinema Secrets and RCMA powder, no color, put it on it. Now it's really important when you powder a design like this that you don't start rubbing it because you're gonna rub the makeup you just put on. So thoroughly powder this puff, rub it together like this and come at it patting and rolling. I put a lot on probably more than I needed to, but. You can take the other side and wipe off excess gently, very gently. Sometimes I'll also take a big brush to wipe off extra. Now this brush has a little bit of color on it, which will also help diffuse some of the lines I've created. Another thing that's important to mention is if I was in a show doing wrinkles on myself, I might not use such contrasty colors here with the lights and darks because my skin is very, very fair and these lights and darks are very harsh contrast and they look a little bit cartoony as I'm sure you can tell. Now if I was on a stage with a very big audience very far away from me, then yes, I might go this dark, but I have the risk of it just looking like a bunch of stripes if I'm not careful. Now, if I was in a really big theater with a big audience and they were far away and there was a ton of light coming at me, I might do wrinkles this dark. That's very possible. But I would also have a lot of contouring and jowls and a white wig, things like that, which bring the look together. Right now, I just have a whole bunch of wrinkles with nothing else. So if you copy this video and don't do the other things, it's not gonna be the best old age makeup that it can be. I like to use mud. You can see a comparison here. See how dark this one is compared to this? I could do very convincing wrinkles with this color. I don't need to go this dark. If my skin were darker, then yes, I would need to go this dark. The same with the highlight color. This is an off white. This is white white. And on dark skin, that can be really harsh. You have to be careful with how much you use. 
So I would do the exact same technique that I did today for this video, but I would use different colors that had less harsh contrast. Unless my director or costume designer or makeup artist saw it and said, I'm not seeing it enough, it's not showing up, the lights on stage are wiping all of these wrinkles you've done out and I'm not seeing it, it's not effective, then I would go in with something darker. I like to be lighter handed instead of cartoony, personally. But I felt for this video, using higher contrast, so you could really see what I was doing and the techniques used for blending would be beneficial to you. So I hope they were. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel below. Thank you.